Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty and today we're playing around with some new makeup. So uh, some of these are brand new releases. Some of them are things that are new to me and kind of the star of the show is probably the eyeshadow. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Metropolis. So we're going to go play around with those right now and then at the end I will share my thoughts on all of these items with you. Thank you so much. All right, so I have on the Seurat Perfectionist Primer as well as the Vizier Eye Primer. And I'm going in with the Rose Ink Concealer. And this is shade LX010. And I'm using the uh, Jumbo Concealer from Sonia G. And just gonna kinda pat this on here. And this concealer, it is layerable. You can definitely layer this and build coverage. And I just like to tap it in with my fingers afterwards um, just to make sure there's like nothing like settling into lines or anything like that. I have dark circles today. I know not super, super dark, but they're, they're not great. So, um, you know what? Let's just add like a touch more and see how that goes. So... Yeah, you can see that makes a big difference. All right, for foundation, I'm taking the Givenchy Prisma Libra Skin Care and Glow Foundation, and I have shade 1N95. Just gonna put this on here and I'm going to use the um Ruffer 31 brush. I actually used this yesterday and did not wash it yet, but here uh and as well. <laughs> I usually like to wash my foundation brushes every day. Um I anything I use like a cream product on, but I just didn't have time. So I figure it's not gonna kill me. All right, so we're going to set the foundation with this powder from Givenchy. This is not available here. I ordered mine from Japan. It sold out quickly. It was technically part of the Givenchy Holiday Collection. It's got this black velvet top and it's all purple. So this is number 11, Sparkling Lilac. And I love this. So take a look. You can see you actually have four different shades of purple. Two of them are pretty close and more blue tone and two of them are lighter. And you know, at first glance, it kind of looks like you just have two shades, but when you look closely, you'll see there are differences between all four shades. So I like to take the more bluish purple one and just tap a little bit of that under my eyes. And I just think it works great as a setting powder. And I think the, the purpley blue, you know, kind of helps disguise a little bit underneath my eyes. And then I like to take the rest with a fluffy brush and set my foundation with it. Sometimes I set my foundation, sometimes I don't. It's not something I do every day. I'm going to take the Ruffer 25 brush. And I didn't use all of the powder in here. I'm not sure if you can see. I actually have a bunch on the side here. Um, but just a light dusting. Now, I like to do my eyeshadow typically before I go into blush. Uh, I like to match my blush to my eyeshadow or coordinate. Um, this is the new Natasha Denona Mini Metropolis. I don't have the full size and, you know, obviously I haven't used this one yet. I think this is a great little set because it's $25 for a mini, which is normal for just this, but you also get this cute little brush. It is synthetic. You can see the amount of flex here. Honestly, is this a brush that I would purchase on its own? No, it's not. But it is a cute little thing to have with it, with a case. And you can see there's like sparkle in the handle. So it's like a deep 
green, like almost like a teal green with sparkle in the handle up to the ferrule. So, you know, I think it is nice. Would I use it? Yes, but would I purchase it on its own? No. So I'm gonna start off with the Refer 16. I'm gonna go into this lightest shade here and I'm just gonna kind of put this um, all over the crease and whatever's left is gonna kind of go all over the lid, just a little bit of a base. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this darker brown and I'm just gonna get this on the tip here. I'm not gonna get a lot of product. I'm gonna put this over here in the outer corner and gently in the crease, just to deepen that area just a little bit. And then I'm going into the green and I'm gonna use the Sunya G Worker Pro for this. We're gonna get I mean, if you want it more intense, use a finger. I'm going to kind of start from here and work it out. Okay, same brush, and I'm gonna go into the sparkly gold, the first shade here, and put that adjacent to it. Oh, this one looks a little bit chunkier. Yeah, it is. And just spreading that over the green actually a little bit as well. Add some sparkle there. All right, going back in with the Raffer 16 and I don't have anything additional on here. Just kind of cleaning that up just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to take a touch of the brown in here again, and I'm going to go right here in the crease now. All right, you can see I do have a little bit of fallout there, so I'm just taking my foundation brush and wiping that away. I wiped away the particles, but it like smeared a little, so just making sure there's nothing on that side. And let's go ahead and do the lower lashes. All right, for the lower lashes, I'm just gonna use the gold and the green and just kind of mirror what's on top. So I'm using the Synergy Pencil One. I wiped it off and now I'm just kind of blending those two together, softening that a little bit. And I'm taking this Chanel Cielo Ya in number 10 a ben and just gonna go on the upper lash line with this now i always like to smudge my eyeliner a little bit so just softening the black a little all right so here are the eyes up close I really like the way the shadows transition. Uh, and I like the gold, like the bronzy gold sparkly shade, how you can kind of tap that over lightly to get more of a topper effect, like we did over here on top of the green. Um, yeah, you can also build that up more opaquely. I think this palette would be very versatile. Um, even if you don't want to use the green, which in my opinion is kind of the highlight, it does make a nice gold palette uh, an accompaniment to, you know, like some other neutrals that you might have if you want to do like a gold holiday look and so forth. Plus you've got these nice like mattes here as well, which I think would be great just for like, um, you know, a regular eye look. So this would be a, like a little bit cooler or add in this more camel shade and you have like a warm neutral set. So I think it's a very versatile eyeshadow palette. I, yeah, I like this one. For brows, I'm going to try this. This is the Givenchy Mr. Um, Cranster Seal Poudre or Eyebrow Powder Pencil. This actually came out before the Gucci one that I love, and I think it's supposed to be similar. Uh, I just, I hadn't really heard about it. So it does come with a sharpener. And I have the shade two, medium. So we've got a spoolie on one end. Feels good. And then here's the actual pencil. So I ordered mine from Amber at Saks in New York. That's kind of the Givenchy flagship. 
you can see, I mean, part of this is because it's a brand new pencil. My Gucci is always way more pigmented when it's new. But yeah, this is definitely similar to that. Okay, so I'm going to take the spooling now and run through this. All right, so the brow pencil, it actually performs very much like the Gucci. So I also picked up the Mr. Brow Groom. And this is like something I've heard of that has like cult status. I picked this up from Amber as well, but it's been something I've been meaning to try. This one is the Clear Gel in 01. I believe there are colors as well. Anyway, what I was saying is, um, you know, the Saks in New York City is like the flagship. So if there's something you're looking for and you can't find it in a store, it's a great place to reach out. So I'll leave Amber's information down below in the description box. I have her Instagram. And if you want to place an order with her or just see if something's available, you can DM her there. All right, so here's the brow groom. We're gonna let that dry and see how it goes, but very curious. We're gonna try a new mascara today too. I've been meaning to try this. This is a sample of the Hourglass Unlocked Mascara. Can't get it out of here. I must have opened the wrong end. I do that all the time. Anyway, um, here it is. So this is a little mini. I have to say this is, is a, feels like a nice container for a mini. Uh, let me go ahead and curl my lashes first. And I'm gonna use the Surratt, not the Surratt, the Ruffer Eyelash Curler and all right, so let's try the hourglass. All right, so there it is on the upper lashes. I stabbed myself in the eyes. I was starting to water a little bit. But um, what do you think? You know, I think it's... um. It's not particularly volumizing or anything. I don't think it was intended to be. Let's read a little bit about this. Yeah, it's the, it's supposed to be lengthening. I don't really notice a ton of length. I think it, I mean, obviously my lashes look longer than they do when they don't have mascara on just because you've got that tint, but I don't find it particularly lengthening. And yeah, but it goes on well and the brush performed nicely or the wand. All right, so we're gonna take one of the Tom Ford blush duos, and this is number two, Explicit Flush. I'm going to use the Kyoto Akabeko brush in the brown shade, and just kind of put it here. So just a little bit of sort of like a contour bron bronzer type thing. And then I'm gonna use the same brush. I'm going into the peach shade here. Just dabbed a touch of it off and just kind of dab this on. Just got a little bit more of this. Now I have picked up all of these blush duos now. I do really like the formula. I'd recommend picking them up on sale. I think full price is a little bit high for the blushes, but I think they are really nice. So if you can get them on sale and you're interested in them, I have to say all six of the duos actually look better on me than I expected them to. I will have a video soon with all of the different blushes and an update on the lipsticks and so forth now that I have gotten the rest of those. All right, so there's that. All right, so I wanted to try a new lip gloss, but actually I think I'm gonna try a new shade of the Givenchy Le Rouge Sheer Velvets. So this one here is 27 Rouge Infusé. And let's see how this goes. I actually um, didn't, I mean, I didn't purchase this on purpose. <laughs> what happened was I got sent the wrong shade when I placed an order and I ended up keeping it, so. So this is a shade kind of built up. 
Let me show you everything from a distance. I actually really like this lipstick color. I, you know, it wasn't one I had picked for myself, but I had used one of those, you know, promotions to get it. And then the shade I wanted was out of stock after they sent the wrong one. So I decided to just keep it because it was pretty much free anyway. Um, so yeah, this is the final look. And I have to say, I really, I, I like everything. So let's go through everything that I used today. Let's work our way backwards. So starting with the lipstick, I already have and love several of these. Um, yeah, I've got a ton of these and I will have a video with all new lip swatches very soon because I finally got in the last of my orders for this. And yes, so that will be coming up soon. Formula wise is very thin. You don't really feel it much on your lips. Texturally, it feels when you rub your lips together, it feels smooth, almost like a powdery silicone feeling, but it doesn't feel like heavy or there. And this is when it's built up. When you just have a thin layer on, you really don't feel anything. Like your lips feel smoother, but you don't feel like you have product on per se. And one of the reasons I like this product over a lot of the other like sheer velvets or deeper velvets is you can see that there really is more of a blurring effect. You've got like the blurred edges around the lip, that's natural. But even look, looking at my lip lines, you can see that they are much more blurred. You know, I, I don't see things like settling in and making my lips look all like creasy. So that's one of the things I really like about these. These do come with the pink velvet case and several of the shades are refillable. So when you purchase that, you can also purchase a refill separately and you just pull this part out. So these I think are fantastic. Definitely one of my favorite lipstick formulas of the year. Moving on, uh, we didn't use any finishing powder today, but we did go over the uh, Tom Ford Blush Duo. As I mentioned when we were trying this on, I really like the actual formula for these. I think that they give you kind of this like nice blurred filter effect. And these are the two shades here that I used in this duo. And you can see that the browner shade is a little bit cooler of a soft brown. And I think it, for me, it really works well to give just a hint of shadow without actually using like a true contour shade. And then you have this peach shade, which actually has like a touch of pink in it. So it's almost a coral, but it's really more of a peach. So I just, I think it looks really beautiful on the skin. You can see it looks more like filtered. And yeah, I, I really like that. Oh, I just realized we didn't use highlight. Uh, anyway, moving on to the brows. So I'm have the brow gel has dried. I do feel it on my brows. Typically, when I put in a brow gel, I'll wipe it away. Not wipe it away, but you know, I'll run through it with a dry spoolie as well to remove any excess. I didn't do that here. It does feel like a little, like you can feel the product on here, so it feels like a little crunchy, but not not that crunchy, like not as crunchy as I might expect from some other brands, but we'll have to see. I'll play with this more and see how I like it. We'll also see how it performs throughout the day, whether or not I end up with any like, you know, any, any product that actually crunches off or anything like that, or it, you know, if it holds up. The brow pencil, I really like. Let's look at that with the Gucci. All right, so this is shade two in the Givenchy and here it is. And you can see the powder, you can kind of see how you can like, you know, buff that out a little bit, which is why I like to run through it with the spoolie. I feel like it looks a little more natural. I have two shades in the Gucci. I have shade 03, shade 10, which is this one here. So you can see it's gonna be a bit darker. The shade is a little bit deep for me. I also, I also purchased, oh, he's open the wrong side. I also purchased number one, which is the taupe shade. And you can see that the Givenchy is kind of in between these. So this one here is taupe, number one, number three from Gucci, and this is number two from Givenchy. 
So the taupe here is going to be a little bit cooler in tone. Uh, there's like a touch more like gray in there. And they're about the same depth though. It's just that this one, the Gucci has a little bit more gray, so it's gonna be a cooler brown than the Givenchy. I have to say texturally, they feel pretty much the same. So I'm going to have to play with this more and see you know, if they're truly the same. You know, I love the Gucci brow pencil. I had no idea this Givenchy one had been around for a while and was actually out first, but I'm glad I tried it. So I will definitely be playing around with that. I'll put an update in that in an update video. All right, so moving on to the mascara, we tried the Hourglass Unlocked, and this is a mini size. So, you know, sometimes they don't perform exactly the same as a full size because of the consistency of the formulas can change a little bit depending on how much product you have in there, uh, as well as sometimes the wands are not always exactly the same on a mini versus a full size. But I think this is a pretty accurate representation. This is a 2B mascara, so to remove this, you just need warm water and you'll have the, these little tubes of your lashes come off. I think it looks nice. We'll see how it performs. I'll put an update in here after I've worn this for a while. We'll see if any of it flakes off or anything like that. Um, but it's like a, it's a, a nice basic mascara in my opinion. So I don't find it particularly lengthening or volumizing, but if you are somebody looking for a tubey mascara just to give your lashes a little bit more presence, then this might be a good option. But again, I'll put an update here to see how this performs over the day. And yeah, so uh, then moving on, we also wore the Givenchy Prisma Libre Skin Care and Glow Foundation. This is one of my favorites. You can see it really gives just like this, like a luminous, dewy, natural look to your skin. Like it's not wet to the touch. It doesn't look wet or greasy at all. Um, there's luminosity without having that pearly effect in there. And I just think it's really very, very beautiful. So love that. The Rose Ink Concealer, it's a hydrating concealer. I find it performs really well and there's a great shade range. And if you're interested in trying the Rose Ink line, you know, I think that's a good product to try. And it's a clean beauty, by the way. So I think that is everything. Other than that, I used my primers that I always use, the Surratt and the Vizier Eye Primer. Still loving those. And I think that's everything that we tried. So onto the star of the show. This is the Natasha Denona mini metropolis palette here are the first three shades let's take a look at these you can see how vibrant that is wow and then here are the last two. Oh, i didn't get a ton of this brown on let's get a little bit more product there Okay, so here's the mini Metropolis. Now, from what I've seen of Metropolis, again, I don't have that one. To me, that looks more like grungy greens and so forth, not quite so much of this pop. So to me, this is really like more of a separate palette. Um, I think it looks really beautiful. Now, we do have the, I'm trying to read the back here, the colors. I had to move to the box because it's like impossible to read the black writing on this dark green. Um, so shade wise, we have starting from over here, the first shade, this is blaze. This is one of the crystal shades. And that means it's going to be this like sparkly, creamy kind of like topper. So you can make it like opaque and use it all over, but you can also share it out and use it as a topper. Then we have the shade rope which is a creamy matte. So that's this one here. I think that one's kind of more, by the way, color wise, I'd say this is more of an orangey gold, a touch of bronze in there. And then rope here is more of like a, it's like an orangey mustard camel shade. So it's definitely gonna be warm tone. And then we have Jubilee, which is a metallic. This is 271. And I mean, I think that's really beautiful. It's really more of a blue green, kind of like a deep forest green with a touch of teal. And then we have another creamy matte. 
This one is Bull, B-O-L-E, and it's number 405. And then we have Corrode. So this is another creamy matte, and this is number 228. So I would say that Bull here, or Bolle maybe, um, this is gonna be a cool mid-tone brown. It's not that cool, it's really more neutral, but it leans a little cool. And then we have this more of a, like a warm, it's, it's not as light as an ivory, um, kind of more of like a warm parchment kind of shade. Uh, if you're looking at like old fashioned parchment paper that has aged, if that makes sense, not like brand new paper. Um, but you know, like on an old document or something like that. So when you see like old papers and things in history, that's what this shade reminds me of, but it's a touch more brown than yellow. Now I do want to do a few compare. I just want to make a few comparisons. This is the Chantecaille Luminescent Eyeshade in Tiger from this year's holiday. This shade here is really more of an emerald. And you can see going on dry like that, that it really spreads out. You've got more of that like blackish base. So to get more of this like true green shade, you really kind of need to pile this on more. So they're completely different greens. This is way more of a blue green. Um, and then we have the Chantecaille Luminescent Eyeshade in Wild Bronze. Again, this isn't really going to go with it, but I do feel like the collection kind of reminded me of it. I feel like these browns are fairly similar. I mean, we have a matte versus a satin, but tone-wise, they're kind of similar. Now, I don't have as extensive of a collection from Natasha Denona as some people do. This is the mini gold, so we're just going to go ahead and swatch this one in comparison. And this is Large, Dark Sepia, and Door. You can see the difference in the gold. This looks way more orange compared to the mini gold. This shade is going to be deeper than the shade here, which was called Corrode. And then there are two more shades in mini gold. They're not really going to go, but we might as well just swatch them. This is Bia and Anthelia, and they're kind of like these more grungy greens. I actually feel like the greens in here remind me more of Metropolis than this one does. All right, so this is a 28 pan um, green, green brown pan. This one here is called Cloudy Blue. So, oh, it's gonna definitely be more blue. This is gonna be softer and blue. Yeah, it's more aqua. All right, let's look at this one here, which is Panesia. I'm not really sure how to say that. I think this one's gonna be too green right here. Yeah, and there's a brown base to it. You know, yeah, I don't really see anything here that's going to going to work. Even these like lighter shades here, they have like rosier undertones. They're not that warm. Let's take a look at this shade here from Linda Hallberg. This is Aura. This is the Enchanted Mysteries palette. And let's put that right here. Nope. And let's take a look at the new Viseart Bijouette palette. So let's start with this shade here. And let's put that right here. Hmm. Those are pretty different as well. And let's try the gold shade right below that. This is going to be, I think, I mean, we don't have the same type of like topper. You can see this one's more gold versus this one here has a little bit more orangey bronze look to it. This is more like an antique gold. You can see that the finish, a little sparkle fell. Um, you can see that the finish is going to be different on these as well because the crystal formula is going to be a little bit chunkier. And I think that's going to be it for my comparisons for this then. Um, so overall, I have to say, I think it's a really nice eyeshadow palette. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that this was helpful. And if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you very soon. Have a great day and stay safe and healthy.